to introduce to Best on Ground. Two of the young stars of the Collingwood Football Club, Josh and Nick Dacos. Join us, gentlemen, Mark Howard here. Great to see you both. We'll start with you, Joshy. Talk us through that first 20 minutes. I was watching it with Nathan. He was just talking about the lack of stoppages. Congratulations to the both of you. By gee, that ball was pinging around in the first 20, Joshy. Absolutely. It was an unreal game. Well done to Freo on a great year. And, yeah, early, early on, as you said, it was a bit of ping-pong football. Um, but we managed to kind of pinch a few goals, which was helpful. In your wildest dreams, did you think you'd be standing next to your brother, Josh, in his first season about to play in a preliminary final next Saturday night in Sydney. It is extraordinary. Congratulations to the both of you. We did, we did. But I think we both didn't think that it would happen this soon. Um, it's been a real whirlwind this year. And, yeah, we're just really excited where we're at as a team and what the team's been uh, producing this year. Have you seen your dad yet? No, we haven't. We're, uh, we're waiting for him to barge through with his big grin. We haven't seen him yet. <laughs> I asked him this morning, does he get more nervous as a player or watching you two? And he said, definitely you two. How was he in the lead up to tonight's game? He was all right this morning. We had him over for brekkie quite early um, to settle his nerves. That, like you said, he gets quite nervous. So I'm sure that the, the uh, hot start um, early in the game would have helped him. Who does the cooking, boys? When you have Dad over for brekkie, what's on the menu? Right here. Nick just does the toast. So he, kicks, he cooks some good toast. <laughs> does, does your dad tell you that you have to kick it to each other on the field? He doesn't need to tell us that. We already know. Josh burns <laughs> me a bit too much, Eddie. I try and tell him, but... And just another one. This is a question for you, Nick, that Josh is in the running for goal of the year. Do you reckon he'll take it out? Um, yeah, I'd love to see him take it out. I think he's really deserving. Um, not as good as any of your goals, but yeah. I think it's a nice goal. <laughs> what do you think, Ed? What do you think, Ed? Uh, I think you might be up there. Big Draper's up there as well and Shea Bolton, but you'll be in the running. That, that basketball bounce back up to you will be uh, it's pretty special. So it'll be close. He sent it to me a few times to vote, so I hope he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a pretty easy question to answer, but I presume that you're both enjoying your football as much as you ever have. And how much does that have to do with um, playing together? Did it happen in junior footy? Is this um, coming around again? How, how good is it to be in this position as brothers? Yeah, I, I hadn't played with Josh um, until our first Pracky match earlier this year. And, yeah, we love it. We're constantly grinning at each other. Um, we sort of get around each other when one of us makes a mistake out there. It's just sort of that support we need. Um, but we've also got it with our other 22 players on the field at, at one time. We're a really close unit. Uh, we wrap our, hand, wrap our arms around um, each other. And I think, yeah, we've got a really special bond here at Collingwood. Footy's a, a one-week-at-a-time proposition, boys, and we know that's always the language coming out of football clubs, but at what point do you dare to dream that, that you could go all the way this year? I think last week. Uh, it started last week with a really solid performance against probably the most consistent and uh, best, te best team of the year. So uh, I think last week we knew, um, you know, we've got the potential to go all the way. It's just about fronting up once again um, and playing another, a good week of good football. Nick, I noticed uh, I had the pleasure of chatting to your brother a few weeks ago on the ground at the MCG, and you were wandering around without your shoes on, just sort of taking in the <laughs> MCG. Is this something you constantly do, barefoot on the MCG? To be honest, it's... Um, no, there's no real story behind it. I just, I just thought I'd walk out quickly, get a feel for the ground, um, and I didn't play too well, so I haven't done it since. Uh, Sydney. Sydney, how are you feeling about taking on Sydney at the SCG? Be an enormous game of football. Be one of the most watched games of AFL in the last 10 years, I reckon. Yeah, we, um, we'll go in really confident, as we do every week. We're back in our structure. I think we played at the SCG a few weeks ago. Um, we took a lot of learnings from that game. The, obviously, quality side had a great win last week. Um, so, yeah, we'll hope we can take it up to them and get through to the big dance. Siren sounds. Collingwood five points down, 40 metres out directly in front. Who should be taking the kick for goal, Josh or Nick? Joshy. Yeah, I'll go me as well. Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, we appreciate your time. Well done to you and Collingwood, and we'll be back in the room shortly. Enjoy the week and enjoy the preliminary final up in Sydney on Saturday afternoon. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thank you. Can you imagine it? Like, your, your cousin has played yeah. in a different team while you've been in there, but playing with your brother 
in front of 90,000 people like that. It's an incredible yeah. story when you're the sons of a legend as well. There's yeah. so many layers. It's unbelievable. I mean, we, we are one of the lucky sports in the world that that, that sort of romance is, is more common. I mean, a father-son rule you talk about in other Best parts rule. of the world. Best rule in the and comp, People Rui. say, what do you mean a father-son rule? And now we've got the fa father-daughter rule in the AFLW as well. It is, it is unique to our game. And so we heard from the McCartan boys earlier in the year as well and, and just what it means to them. I mean, they signed a package deal. Mm. This week, did, I mean, yeah. this sort of stuff just doesn't happen <laughs> in any other sports. It's it's awesome. Josh's improvement. He came into the side. He wasn't touted like his brother has been, Nathan. But this season, he has been a standout out there on the wing. He has. He, he had a breakout season in 2020 on the wing, and and um, and really stood up and, and started to come into himself. But I, I mean, I, I was asking, just seeing the two brothers stand side by side there. The thought that came to me is that Josh has grown again with with his younger brother there. And I'd, I think it's, it's probably that, you know, being the older brother and, and wanting to go take him along for the ride as much as anything. I don't think it's just Nick on his journey. I think Josh is, try, is trying to show him the way a little bit as well. And it's been great to see them both come through and rise together. They've clearly got their head switched on, but also their skills. And Peter Dacos was talking this morning about how he'd always get them playing as kids with um, balloons. All about you know being delicate and soft hands. Eddie, are you well, doing any, do any of that. that with your kids? No, not really. But I might have to do that at home. But but Nick is an absolute star. You know, I thought he was going to make all Australian, but you know he, he would take boats in the Brownlow. He might be close to the best and fairest for a young. 18-year-old kid and, you know, when we played him last week, we had to, to watch this kid because, like we said just before, the offence, their offence starts with, with him. They want, to give, they want the ball in his hands so he can use it through that back half and he's an absolute beauty, so looking forward to it. I am not a Collingwood supporter, but our next guest is my favourite player in the competition. I say that uh, absolutely. His name is Darcy Moore. He joins us from the Collingwood room. Darcy, Mark out here. <laughs> Definitely not true. No, it is. Not you are genuinely my favourite player in the competition. I love everything about the way you play footy. We just spoke to the Dacos boys. What, what was it like for you out there in front of 90,000 screaming fans? The majority of Collingwood. First 20 minutes was an unbelievable start to a game of footy. Well done to you and your footy club. Thanks, mate. You're going to have to excuse me. I've had the flu all <laughs> week, so I don't have much of a voice left. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was unreal, mate. The, the G was pumping, as you said, 90,000 fans against, against Fremantle. Um, it was unbelievable. And just from the, from the first bounce, they were, they were loud and proud and, and they rode it all the way home with us. So it was, it was unbelievable. Das, I, I can vouch for Howie. He does call you his guy every time the ball comes near you. So, uh, so that, is, that is legitimate. <laughs> um, you've got this post-siren celebration thing going really well. Like, do your teammates know that they can't come within 30 or 40 metres of you until a certain time after the siren, so you can do your thing? Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just getting around the army, mate. It's been... Um, their support's been unbelievable this year, and they've got a really great vibe about them this season, and, and we've loved every second, so just trying to show them a bit of love, and um, and they seem to really respond to it. So I'm just playing, playing my role for the team, Mark. <laughs> yeah, Dars, great, great win by the boys tonight. Um, you know, you're, you're coming up against Sydney. Buddy Franklin, are you going to take that job or, or Jeremy? Uh, can you let me just enjoy winning a semi-final, <laughs> please? I'll worry, about, I'll worry about next week, next week. So, um, yeah, I'll take that one on notice. All good. Hey, Darcy, we just had uh, the Dacos boys on and obviously they're father was at Collingwood great similar to your situation did so did your dads play together at Collingwood uh yeah I think they overlapped for a couple of seasons I'm not sure if it was um if it was uh, a meaningful amount of time but they definitely overlapped maybe towards the end of my dad's time at Collingwood and and the start of Peter's when he was uh, when he was a young player and of course they started pretty young back then so I think he was a teenager um a key defender's job is made easier by pressure up the field. It's as good as um, I've seen. Uh, I think it's as good as most people have witnessed. Surely you love that and you celebrate that and you're getting around the midfielders and the high forwards about the sort of pressure that they're putting on the opposition ball movement. Oh, absolutely. And I feel like it's getting better in the finals and towards the late rounds of the season. That's what's the really encouraging thing. Um, we obviously had a few weeks where we lost clearance count and lost contested possession by quite a lot, which put us under the pump a fair bit. But the last two finals, they've just come to play in there. Um, 
and the quality, the thing that makes a massive difference as a key back is the quality of tackling. So not getting, not getting fended off or, and now guys sticking their tackles to be able to force a, a rush kick. And the guys have just done that so well the last couple of weeks and it's made our job a lot easier, that's for sure. Lemon tea and honey for you, young man. Oh. Well done, congratulations. Enjoy the week. We'll see you next Saturday if, afternoon in the prelim. If Strepsils are looking for a brand ambassador, <laughs> just let me know. Good on you, Das. Appreciate your time. <laughs>